So today we're going to take a look at user input in code.org. And we've learned that there's a lot of neat design elements that we can use, like uh, text input, and several buttons, and, and things like that up here underneath our design tool. But for today, we're just going to look at a real basic way of collecting some input and storing it in a list. Okay. So we want to try to use comments as much as possible. So I'll grab a comment box here and I'll say uh, create variables. Okay. And what I could do then is think about what it is I want to track and what I want to enter. Maybe I'm looking at um, students' grades. I'm going to ask somebody to type in all their quizzes, um, their scores, right? All right, so I'd need a variable to keep track of um, the current score. And I'm also going to have a list as well to have all the scores. Okay, so I'm going to have two variables then. All right, as I go down here, I have, all, I have a lot of options. And if you go into the project tab of code.org, um, instead of just going through all the little units that we're doing, you have a whole lot of boxes available to you. So as I go down the list here, um, I'm going to need a list. I want to store all the scores. So as I go down here, I'm looking for that list. And down here says var list. And um, may maybe the, this is grades. Okay. I'm going to take all these values out because I just want a, an empty list. And the student is going to type their grades in. So we have a variable called grades. It's a list. It's empty. Now, if I want to let the student type in their grades, well, I need to come down here. And if you look, there's var x prompt, and then there's prompt num. So you just got to think about what type of data you're going to collect. If I was collecting student names, I would just use the prompt. But since I'm going to collect scores, all right, things that I want to add, subtract, multiply, maybe I want to find the average test score or the highest test score, the lowest test score, right? Well, prompt num. Okay, so since I'm going to do something with that math, I want to collect it. All right, so how about I just call this score? And what this will do is we'll run this and it'll say prompt num, and then we can give the user a prompt, enter a value, kind of vague. So how about um, you know, type in a... Um, test score. Okay. All right. So that'll grab that test score. All right. And it'll actually give a prompt. It'll pop up a little uh, menu on the screen. And then we want to somehow put that score into the grades list. Okay. So if we scroll down through these purple boxes here, we have a pen, right? Well, you want to append what, what list? Well, the list is grades. So grades. And what do you want to append it with? Append it with score. Okay. All right, great. So that's helpful. All right, and then how about we print the print the scores? All right, so we could just do a simple console.log. And I could say print what? Do I want to print just the current score? Do I want to print all the grades? So let's try to print our whole list. Okay, and if I run it, let's say type in a test score. Well, maybe I got an 80 on that first test. Well, that's it. Well, what do I do if I had more tests, right? Our, our teachers give us tests after every unit or quizzes. So we need to think about a way to keep gathering this data. If, if a teacher knew they were going to give five tests, I could set that up and I could just ask five times. Okay. Now, what happens if we have six tests or seven or maybe we eliminate one, right? So you might want to think about ways to design this to be very open-ended. Okay. What we'll do here, I'm just going to come up with a, a fictitious, you know, scenario here. And I'll put a, put a little list in here, or put a um, comment at the top, and I'll just say um, a class had five tests this semester. Um, collect all five test scores. 
but we're going to do this five times. So, well, how do I want to set this up? Well, if we have five test scores, I could just copy and paste this five times, right? But we want to be efficient. And perhaps an assignment you're working on right now in class is asking you to use a loop to fill a list. Right? Use a loop to fill a list. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's do a for loop. Okay. For var i, start counting at zero. Well, we have five scores, so we'll change that second number to five. So this will loop five times because we have five test scores. Now, if you didn't know how many test scores you'd have, we'd, we'd need to design a way to open that up um, and end this loop at the appropriate time. But for now, we'll, we'll set this up and say that we have five test scores. All right, so now let's think, what do we want to bring down into here? Well, let's, let's bring this prompt down, right? Because I'd like to ask five times. If this prompt is outside the loop, it'll only ask once. I'd like to bring it five times. We also want to append this five times. And then you can choose here. We're, we're, we talk about sequencing, selection, and iteration. Would you like to print the list out every time somebody types in a score? Or maybe at the end? It's up to you. Okay, so just double check those. All right, so let's see if this works. Okay, so we'll hit reset and run. Type in a test score. 80. Type in a test score. Maybe I moved up, I got a 90 on the next one. Type in a test score, 92. The test score, maybe I got a 95. Maybe that next one I bombed, I got a 65. All right, and then sure enough, if you look down here in the console.log, 80, 90, 92, 95, 65. All right, so it went through, it asked me five times. It added them to a list, and then it printed it at the end. Again, as we work through the class, we'd really like to get everything out here on this screen. All right, and there's ways of doing that, okay? Um, you know, text inputs and, and things like that. Um, but this type of coding can be applied to, to that design work. So start with that for now, and we'll see if we can start doing some math with this in a later video.